Well, I sure am glad you're here with us today. Another big day, another big week, big stories all the time. Logan Washburn knows that, staff writer covering election integrity, graduated from Hillsdale College, served as Christopher Rufo's editorial assistant. Big job. By lines of the Wall Street Journal, the Tennessean, the Daily Caller, and elsewhere. Uh, today, who is this mysterious group mailing ballot applications in the name of the Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer? That's the big question. He's got the big story. Here's Logan Washburn. Welcome to the program. Thanks for having me on the show, Steve. It's great to meet you. Uh, great to meet you. So tell me about this. Um, what is this all about? So um, a group called the Voter Project Michigan has been sending absentee ballot applications across the state. Um, there are at least two different mailings that we know of um, in, in separate ends of the state. Um, one mailing was um, in Hillsdale, the southern end of the state, um, right near Hillsdale College. Um, and the other mailing was in Gretchen Whitmer's name, and that was all the way up in Marquette. So we know that this is an effort that's going on across the state um, with at least two different um, sets of mailings. And we've since had people come in on the comments on our website saying there are more. So we're just trying to figure out the scope of this at this point. So it, is it legal? Is it covered by a PAC? Is it, is it not legal? What, what have you found? It's really difficult to pin that down because this group doesn't have much of a presence out there. Um, they're run out of a P.O. box in the small town of Dexter, um, just very, very nondescript. Um, they don't appear to be registered as a business or, or organization through um, Michigan's LARA system. Um, and through the IRS's 990 search where you can find nonprofits, they're not um, appearing there either. So it's really hard to pin down who this group is. Um, I haven't found anyone who has conclusive answers about who's actually behind it. Though there's a similar group called the Voter Project out of Pennsylvania that did a similar thing. And so it, it's really kind of a mystery about it at this point, but we definitely um, are, are trying to pin that down. Give me the name of that organization again uh, on these mailers. The Voter Project Michigan. Voter Project Michigan. And you've heard, you know, uh, some places here and there. Any idea how widespread it is? And, and have you seen the mailers yourself? Yeah, I have. Um, I've I've seen well, I've se I've seen pictures um, from friends that have sent it to me. Right. Um, they were the adult children of a city councilman here in Hillsdale. Um, all three of them got these ballot applications, um, but he didn't get one, and so so that's sort of interesting. Um, we haven't figured out how widespread these efforts are yet. Um, actually, when I asked the Secretary of State's office and Whitmer's office, Whitmer never got back to me. Um, the Secretary of State, though, said that this is a very common thing and kind of kind of dismissed it um, and said that it's fine because clerks um, ultimately have to compare signatures with those in their voter files. But right. It sounds like that's the only safeguard that we have to keep nefarious actors from taking advantage of the system. Uh, Jocelyn Benson tried to have that thrown out as well, just for the record, Logan. She didn't even want signature matches because, yeah. you know, democracy and every vote has to count. That's mm -hmm. why they want Robert F. Kennedy Jr. on the ballot, because every vote must count, even though he is not running and didn't want his name on the ballot any further because they can't no West democracy. off the ballot. Yeah, he wanted his name off the ballot. They sued to keep it on. Mm -hmm. Cornell West wanted to be on. They sued to take him off. Jill Stein, the same. They're both on. So is JFK, or RFK, excuse me. <laughs> um, have you read the verbiage on these? You've seen the pictures of these uh, Voter yeah. Project Michigan mailings. And, and you mm -hmm. say it's tied to Gretchen Whitmer. They use her name. They drop her name there to make yeah. it seem more credible or more genuine or whatever. What is the verbiage mm -hmm. that we're seeing here? Let's see. Um, so on the envelopes, they say um, important election mail. Um, on, on both of the mailings that we've seen so far, they use similar language. Um, they appear to be coming from some kind of governmental source, even if they're not dropping Whitmer's name. But the one that was most concerning um, was shared by Representative Brad Paquette. Um, and that's the one that bore Gretchen Whitmer's name. It said Gretchen Whitmer and then listed the address of this group um, and then uh, on the return address. Um, and when it comes to what was actually in the envelope, that's even more concerning. It had a letterhead that said governor of the state of Michigan or, or governor Gretchen Whitmer. And it had a letter from her talking about the importance of 
voting rights and reproductive health, you know, all, all these um, uh, buzzwords um, talking about how important it is to vote in this next election. And then it had the signature of Governor Gretchen Whitmer or what appeared to be that. And so um, it, either so this it might group be connected is, to her. We don't really know, Logan, what's real and what's not. We don't know what, what the truth is here, do we? Exactly. Yeah, I mean, either they're they're using her name without permission and, and this is a, a huge problem or she has somehow endorsed this group and, and is connected to these efforts. Um, so either way, I don't think it's great. <laughs> yeah, this is definitely something to keep an eye on, especially as it spreads across the state ahead, ahead of November. Yeah, it reminds me of these um, alleged news outlets that have popped up around the country that would say, you know, Michigan News Express or whatever, they have these names that sound like they're a news outlet. But then when you open them, they look like they have legitimate headlines. But when you open them up, they're trashing Trump, they're trashing Republicans. Same sort of thing like you said there. Here are the big talking points for the Democrats. They appear to be legitimate news outlets. And then you find out, well, most people figure out they're not. But I wonder if some people just don't get it. Uh, Logan, I'll mm -hmm. give you the last word. All right. Well, thank you so much. Um, yeah, I would just say that it's important if anyone receives these mailers, please um, reach out to us. I would love to, to keep an eye on where these are going. Logan at thefederalist.com is my email. Um, and, and yeah, just keep focusing on um, what the content is. Um, if it seems like it's not official, it probably isn't. Look at the return address and keep an eye out for these ballots. All right, Logan Please. Washburn. Thank you so much for being here. Greatly appreciate you, sir. Thank you. Thanks for having me on the show. Absolutely. Appreciate you being here. Uh, here's the story I told you at the top of this hour uh, from Bay City. Uh, one week after finding human remains in the Saginaw River, police have arrested a Bay City man searching his home. The suspect's name has not been released, accused of killing and dismembering 41-year-old Justy Stillwell, who was reported missing September the 18th. Stillwell worked as a custodian at the Handy Middle School in Bay City. Last week, a girl found a severed foot at the Edward Golson boat launch. Later, people found two arms, two lower legs. Stillwell's family reported him missing the same day after he failed to show up for work. His vehicle was found across from where his severed body parts were found. And they identified it him using fingerprints. If you have any information on Stillwell's death, you have to call the Bay City Police Department. 989-892-8571. Crazy, right? Suspect in custody, though. That didn't take very long. You just can't chop up your friends and neighbors without people figuring it out. All right, coming up. Ivy's going to be here, as always. See what she's got in her mind today. We've got a lot going on. First day of voting here in Michigan, 40 days away. Your mail-in ballots are legal today. If you want to drop them off or mail them, you can go to the drop boxes. Every county and township, I believe, has one. Or you can drop it in the mail and trust that you... United States Postal Service. Uh, I think I'd drop it in a box. I don't trust any of it, but I'm going to drop it in the box and say a little prayer that my ballot makes it and that we win this election by running up the score early. We'll see what happens. I'll take a break. It's the Steve Gruber Show. I'll be right back.